First Chronicles, Chapter One, Adam's Line to Noah. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Descendants of Japheth. The sons of Japheth. Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tyrus. The sons of Gomer. Ashkenaz, and Diphath, and Togarma, the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Rodanim, descendants of Ham, the sons of Ham, Cush, and Misraim, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sapta, and Reama, and Sapteca. The sons of Reama, Sheba, and Dedan. Cush became the father of Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. Mizraim became the father of Ludim, and Anamim and Lehabim, and Naphtuim, and Pathrusim, and Casluhim, where the Philistines came from, and Kaphtorim. Canaan became the father of Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite and the Arvadite, and the Zemurite, and the Hamathite. Descendants of Shem The sons of Shem, Elam, and Asher, and Arpachshad, and Lud, and Aram, and Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Meshech. Arpachshad became the father of Shelah, and Shelah became the father of Eber. To Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Joktan became the father of Almodan, and Sheleph, and Hazarmaveth, and Jira and Hadorim, and Uzal, and Dikla, and Ebal, and Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan, Shem, Arpachshad, Shelah, Eber, Peleg, Ru, Serug, Nahor, Terah, Abram. The same is Abraham. Descendants of Abraham. The sons of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael. These are their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebaioth, then Kedar, and Adbeel and Mipsam, Mishma, and Duma, Massa, Hadad, and Tema, Jeter, Naphish, and Kerema. These are the sons of Ishmael. The sons of Ketera, Abraham's concubine. She bore Zemran, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua, the sons of Jokshan, Sheba, 
and Dedan, the sons of Midian, Ephah and Epher, and Hanak, and Abida, and Eldea. All these were the sons of Ketera, descendants of Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, the sons of Isaac, Esau and Israel, the sons of Esau, Eliphaz, Ruel, and Jeush, and Jalem, and Korah, the sons of Eliphaz, Teman, and Omar, Zephi, and Gadam, Kenaz, and Timnah, and Amalek, the sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah, the sons of Seir, Lotan, and Shobal, and Zibion, and Ana, and Dishon, and Ezer, and Dishan, the sons of Lotan, Horai, and Homem, and Timnah was Lotan's sister, the sons of Shobal, Alian, and Manahath, and Ebal, Shephi, and Onam, the sons of Zibion, Aya, and Ana, the sons of Ana, Dishon, the sons of Dishon, Hamran, and Eshban, and Ithran, and Karan. The sons of Ezer, Bilhan, and Zeavan, Jeachan, the sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aran, the rulers of Edom. Now these are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. Bela, the son of Beor, and the name of his city was Dinheba. Bela died, and Jobab, the son of Zerah, of Bozra, reigned in his place. Jobab died, and Husham, of the land of the Temanites, reigned in his place. Husham died, and Hadad, the son of Bedad, who struck Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his place. And the name of his city was Avith. Hadad died, and Samla of Masrika reigned in his place. Samla died, and Sheul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his place. Sheul died, and Baal Hanan, the son of Agbor, reigned in his place. Baal Hanan died, and Hadad reigned in his place, and the name of his city was Pi, and his wife's name was Mehedabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. Hadad died. The chiefs of Edom were Chief Timna, Chief Alia, Chief Jetheth, Chief Oholibama, Chief Elah, Chief Pinan, Chief Kenaz, Chief Teman, Chief Mibzar, Chief Magdiel, Chief Iram. These are the chiefs of Edom. Chapter 2 The Sons of Israel These are the sons of Israel. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, and Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Descendants of Judah The sons of Judah, Ur, and Onan, 
and Shelah. Which three were born to him of Shua's daughter, the Canaanites? Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of Yahweh, and he killed him. Tamer, his daughter-in-law, bore him Perez and Zerah. All the sons of Judah were five. The sons of Perez, Hezron, and Hamul. The sons of Zerah, Zimri, and Ethan, and Heman, and Calcol, and Dara, five of them in all. The sons of Carmi, Achar, the troubler of Israel, who committed a trespass in the devoted thing. The sons of Ethan, Azariah. The sons also of Hezron, who were born to him, Jeramiel, and Ram, and Kalubai. Ram became the father of Amenadab, and Amenadab became the father of Nashon, prince of the children of Judah. And Nashon became the father of Salma, and Salma became the father of Boaz. And Boaz became the father of Obed, and Obed became the father of Jesse. The children of Jesse. And Jesse became the father of his firstborn, Eliab, and Abinadab the second, and Shemia the third, Nethanel the fourth, Radai the fifth, Ozem the sixth. David the seventh, and their sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail, the sons of Zeruiah, Abishai and Joab, and Asahel, three. Abigail bore Amasa, and the father of Amasa was Jether, the Ishmaelite. Descendants of Hezron Caleb, the son of Hezron, became the father of children of Azubah, his wife, and of Jerioth. And these were her sons, Jeshur, and Shobab, and Ardan. Azubah died, and Caleb took to him Ephrath, who bore him Hur. Hur became the father of Uri, and Uri became the father of Bezalel. Afterward, Hezron went in to the daughter of Machir, the father of Gilead, whom he took as wife when he was sixty years old, and she bore him Segub. Segub became the father of Jair, who had twenty-three cities in the land of Gilead. Geshur and Aram took the towns of Jair from them, with Keneth and its villages, even sixty cities. All these were the sons of Machir, the father of Gilead. After that Hezron was dead in Caleb Ephrathah, then Abijah, Hezron's wife, bore him Asher, the father of Tekoa. Descendants of Jeramiel The sons of Jeramiel, the firstborn of Hezron, were Ram, the firstborn, and Buna, and Oren, and Ozem, Ahijah. Jeramiel had another wife, whose name was Adara. She was the mother of Onam. The sons of Ram, the firstborn of Jeramiel, were Maaz, and Jamin, and Eker. The sons of Onam were Shammai, and Jada, the sons of Shammai, Nadab, and Abishur. The name of the wife of Abishur was Abihel, and she bore him Aben, and Molid, the sons of Nadab, Selid, and Appium. But Selid died without children, the sons of Appium, Ishai, the sons of Ishai, Shishan, the sons of Shishan, 
Ali, the sons of Jada, the brother of Shammai, Jether, and Jonathan. And Jether died without children. The sons of Jonathan, Peleth, and Zaza. These were the sons of Jeramiel. Now Shishan had no sons, but daughters. Shishan had a servant, an Egyptian, whose name was Jarha. Shishan gave his daughter to Jaha, his servant, as a wife, and she bore him Atai. Atai became the father of Nathan, and Nathan became the father of Zabad, and Zabad became the father of Iflal, and Iflal became the father of Obed. And Obed became the father of Jehu. And Jehu became the father of Azariah. And Azariah became the father of Helez. And Helez became the father of Eleazar. And Eleazar became the father of Sismai. And Sismai became the father of Shalom. And Shalom became the father of Jechemiah. And Jechemiah became the father of Elishema. The Clans of Caleb The sons of Caleb, the brother of Jeramiel, were Mesha, his firstborn, who was the father of Ziph, and the sons of Marisha, the father of Hebron. The sons of Hebron, Korah, and Tapua, and Rechem, and Shema. Shema became the father of Rahim, the father of Jorkim, and Rechem became the father of Shammai. The son of Shammai was Mayan, and Mayan was the father of Beth Zer. Ephah, Caleb's concubine, bore Haran, and Moza, and Gazes. And Haran became the father of Gazes, the sons of Jadai, Regim, and Jothan, and Geshan, and Pelet, and Ephah, and Sheaf. Maaka, Caleb's concubine, bore Sheber, and Terhana. She bore also Sheaf, the father of Madmana, Shiva the father of Macbena, and the father of Gibeah, and the daughter of Caleb was Aksa. These were the sons of Caleb, the son of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrathah, Shobal, the father of kiriath Jerim, Salma, the father of Bethlehem, Harif, the father of beth Gader. Shobal, the father of kiriath Jerim, had sons. Horoah, half of the Menuhoth, the families of kiriath Jerim, the Ithrites, and the Puthites, and the Shumathites, and the Mishraites. Of them came the Zorathites and the Eshtaolites, the sons of Salma, Bethlehem, and the Netophathites, Atroth Beth Joab, and half of the Manahathites, the Zorites, the families of scribes who lived at Jabez, the Tirathites, the Shemiathites, the Sukkothites. These are the Kenites who came of Hamath, the father of the house of Rechab. Chapter 3 Descendants of David Now these were the sons of David, who were born to him in Hebron. The firstborn, Amnon, of Ahinoam, the Jezreelites. The second, Daniel, of Abigail, the Carmelites. The third, Absalom, the son of Maacah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. The fourth, Adonijah the son of Haggith, the fifth, Shephatiah of Abidal, the sixth, Ithream, by Eglah, his wife, 
six were born to him in Hebron, and there he reigned seven years and six months. In Jerusalem he reigned thirty-three years, and these were born to him in Jerusalem, Shimea, and Shobab, and Nathan, and Solomon, four, of Bathshua, the daughter of Amiel, and Ibhar, and Elishama, and Eliphalet, and Noga, and Nepheg, and Japhiah, and Elishama, and Eliada, and Eliphalet, nine. All these were the sons of David, besides the sons of the concubines, and Tamer was their sister. Descendants of Solomon Solomon's son was Rehoboam, Abijah his son, Asa his son, Jehoshaphat his son, Joram his son, Ahaziah his son, Joash his son, Amaziah his son, Azariah his son, Jotham his son, Ahaz his son, Hezekiah, his son, Manasseh, his son, Ammon, his son, Josiah, his son, the sons of Josiah, the firstborn, Johanan, the second, Jehoiakim, the third, Zedekiah, the fourth, Shalom, the sons of Jehoiakim, Jeconiah, his son, Zedekiah, his son. Descendants of Jeconiah The sons of Jeconiah, the captive, Shealtiel, his son, and Melchiram, and Padeah, and Shenazar, Jechamiah, Hashema, Nedabiah, the sons of Padeah, Zerubbabel, and Shimei, the sons of Zerubbabel, Meshulam, and Hananiah, and Shalomith was their sister, and Ashuba, and Ohel, and Berechiah, and Hasadiah, Jusheb Hesed, five, the sons of Hananiah, Pelatiah, and Jeshea, the sons of Rephaiah, the sons of Arnon, the sons of Obadiah, the sons of Shechaniah, the sons of Shechaniah, Shemaiah, the sons of Shemaiah, Hattush, and Igel, and Bariah, and Neariah, and Shaphat, six, the sons of Neariah, Elioenai, and Hezkiah, and Azricam, three, the sons of Elioenai, Hodaviah, and Eliashib, and Peleah, and Akub, and Johanan, and Deleah, and Anani, seven. Chapter four, descendants of Judah. The sons of Judah, Perez, Hezron, and Carmi, and Hur, and Shobal. Rea, the son of Shobal, became the father of Jahath, and Jahath became the father of Ahumai and Lahad. These are the families of the Zorathites. These were the sons of the father of Edom, Jezreel, and Ishma, and Idbash, and the name of their sister was Hazalel Ponai, and Penuel, the father of Gedor, and Ezer, the father of Husha. These are the sons of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrathah, the father of Bethlehem, 
Asher, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Hela and Neara. Neara bore him a Huzam, and Hefer, and Temanai, and Heahashtari. These were the sons of Neara. The sons of Hela were Zerith, Izhar, and Ethnan. Hakaz became the father of Anub and Zobeda, and the families of Aharhel, the son of Haram. The Prayer of Jabez Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother named him Jabez, saying, Because I bore him with sorrow. Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that it not be to my sorrow. God granted him that which he requested. Caleb, the brother of Shua, became the father of Meher, who was the father of Eshton. More Descendants of Judah Eshton became the father of Bethrepha, and Posea, and Tehenna, the father of Ernahash. These are the men of Recha, the sons of Kenaz, Othniel, and Sarea, the sons of Othniel, Hathath. Meonathai became the father of Ophrah, and Sarea became the father of Joab, the father of Geharishim, for they were craftsmen, the sons of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Iru, Elah, and Nahum, and the sons of Elah, and Kenaz, the sons of Jehalalel, Ziph, and Zipha, Tyria, and Azarel, the sons of Ezra, Jether, and Mered, and Epher, and Jalen, and she bore Miriam, and Shammai, and Ishba, the father of Eshtemoa. His wife, the Jewess, bore Jared, the father of Gedor, and Heber, the father of Soko, and Jekuthiel, the father of Zenoah. These are the sons of Bethiah the daughter of Pharaoh, whom Mered took, the sons of the wife of Hodiah, the sister of Nahum, were the father of Keilah, the Garmite, and Eshtemoa, the Maacathite, the sons of Shimon, Amnon, and Rena, Ben-Hanan, and Tylan, the sons of Ishai, Zoheth, and ben -Zoheth. The Sons of Shelah The sons of Shelah, the son of Judah, Er, the father of Leka, and Laada, the father of Marisha, and the families of the house of those who worked the fine linen, of the house of Ashbia, and Jochim, and the men of Koziba, and Joash, and Seraph, who had dominion in Moab, and Jeshubalim. The records are ancient. These were the potters and the inhabitants of Netaim and Gadira. There they lived with the king for his work. The Descendants and Cities of Simeon The Sons of Simeon, Nemuel and Jamin Jerib, Zira, Sheu, Shalom his son, Mibsam his son, Mishma his son, the sons of Mishma, Hamuel his son, Zachar his son, Shimei his son. Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters, but his brothers didn't have many children. Neither did all their family multiply like the children of Judah. They lived at Beersheba, and Molada, and Hazar Shul, 
and at Bilhah, and at Ezem, and at Tolad, and at Bethuel, and at Hormah, and at Ziglag, and at Beth Markaboth, and Hazar Susam, and Beth Beerai, and at Shearaim. These were their cities to the reign of David. Their villages were Edom, and Ayan, Rimon, and Token, and Ashan, five cities, and all their villages that were around the same cities, to Baal. These were their habitations, and they have their genealogy. Mishobab, and Jamlek, and Josha, the son of Amaziah, and Joel, and Jehu, the son of Joshabiah, the son of Saraiah, the son of Aziel, and Elioenai, and Jacoba, and Jeshaheah, and Isaiah, and Adiel, and Jesimiel, and Benaiah, and Ziza, the son of Shiphai, the son of Alan, the son of Judea, the son of Shemri, the son of Shemaiah. These mentioned by name were princes in their families, and their father's houses increased greatly. Their Conquest of Gedor They went to the entrance of Gedor, even to the east side of the valley, to seek pasture for their flocks. They found fat pasture and good, and the land was wide and quiet and peaceable for those who lived there before were of Ham. These, written by name, came in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and struck their tents, and the Meunim, who were found there, and destroyed them utterly to this day, and lived in their place, because there was pasture there for their flocks. Some of them, even of the sons of Simeon, five hundred men, went to Mount Seir, having for their captains Pelatiah and Neariah and Rephaiah and Uziel, the sons of Ishai. They struck the remnant of the Amalekites who escaped and have lived there to this day. Chapter 5 Descendants of Reuben The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but because he defiled his father's couch, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, and the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright, for Judah prevailed above his brothers, and of him came the prince, but the birthright was Joseph's. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Hanuk and Palu, Hezron, and Carmi, the sons of Joel, Shimea, his son, Gog, his son, Shimei, his son, Micah, his son, Rhea, his son, Baal, his son, Beera, his son, whom Tilgath Pilneser, king of Assyria, carried away captive. He was prince of the Reubenites. His brothers by their families, when the genealogy of their generations was reckoned. The chief, Jeiel, and Zechariah, and Bela, the son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel, who lived in Aurora, even to Nebo and Baalmeon. And eastward he lived, even to the entrance of the wilderness from the river Euphrates, because their livestock were multiplied in the land of Gilead. In the days of Saul, they made war with the Hagrites, who fell by their hand, and they lived in their tents throughout all the land east of Gilead. Descendants of Gad The sons of Gad lived over against them, in the land of Bashan, to Salica, Joel the chief, and Shapham the second, and Jani, and Shaphat in Bashan, their brothers of their father's houses, Michael, and Meshulam, and Sheba, 
and Jorai, and Jacob, and Ziah, and Eber, seven. These were the sons of Abihel, the son of Hurai, the son of Jeruah, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jeshishai, the son of Jado, the son of Buzz, Ahai, the son of Abdiel, the son of Gunai, chief of their father's houses. They lived in Gilead, in Bashan, and in its towns, and in all the suburbs of Sharon, as far as their borders. All these were reckoned by genealogies in the days of Jotham, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel. Victory over the Hagrites The sons of Reuben and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, of valiant men, men able to bear buckler and sword, and to shoot with bow, and skillful in war, were forty-four thousand seven hundred and sixty, that were able to go forth to war. They made war with the Hagrites, with Jeter and Naphish and Nodab. They were helped against them, and the Hagrites were delivered into their hand, and all who were with them, for they cried to God in the battle, and he was entreated of them, because they put their trust in him. They took away their livestock, of their camels fifty thousand, and of sheep two hundred fifty thousand, and of donkeys two thousand, and of men one hundred thousand, for there fell many slain, because the war was of God. They lived in their place until the captivity. The Half-Tribe of Manasseh The children of the half-tribe of Manasseh lived in the land. They increased from Bashan to Baal Hermon, and Sinir and Mount Hermon. These were the heads of their father's houses, even Ephor, and Ishai, and Eliel, and Azrael, and Jeremiah, and Hodaviah, and Jadiel, mighty men of valor, famous men, heads of their fathers' houses. They trespassed against the God of their fathers, and played the prostitute after the gods of the peoples of the land, whom God destroyed before them. The God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, and the spirit of tilgath pilneser king of Assyria, and he carried them away, even the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and brought them to Hala and Habor and Hara and to the river of Gozan to this day. Chapter 6 Descendants of Levi The Sons of Levi Gershon, Kohath, and Merari, the sons of Kohath, Amram, Izhar, and Hebron, and Uziel, the children of Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam, the sons of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Eleazar became the father of Phineas. Phineas became the father of Abishua. And Abishua became the father of Buckai. And Buckai became the father of Uzai. And Uzai became the father of Zerahiah. And Zerahiah became the father of Meraoth. Meraoth became the father of Amariah. And Amariah became the father of Ahitub. And Ahita became the father of Zadok. And Zadok became the father of Ahimaaz. And Ahimaaz became the father of Azariah. And Azariah became the father of Johanan. And Johanan became the father of Azariah. He it is who executed the priest's office in the house that Solomon built in Jerusalem. And Azariah became the father of Amariah. And Amariah became the father of Ahitub. And Ahitub became the father of Zadok. 
and Zadok became the father of Shalom, and Shalom became the father of Hilkiah, and Hilkiah became the father of Azariah, and Azariah became the father of Saraiah, and Saraiah became the father of Jehozadak. Jehozadak went into captivity when Yahweh carried away Judah and Jerusalem by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. The Levite Clans The sons of Levi, Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. These are the names of the sons of Gershom, Libni, and Shimei. The sons of Kohath were Amram, and Izhar, and Hebron, and Azael. The sons of Merari, Malai, and Mushai. These are the families of the Levites, according to their father's houses. Of Gershom, Libni his son, Jahath his son, Zema his son, Joah his son, Edo his son, Zerah his son, Jeatharai his son. The sons of Kohath, Amenadab his son, Korah, his son, Aser, his son, Elkanah, his son, and Abiasaph, his son, and Aser, his son, Tehath, his son, Uriel, his son, Uzziah, his son, and Sheul, his son, the sons of Elkanah, Amasai, and Ahimoth. As for Elkanah, the sons of Elkanah, Zophai, his son, and Nahath, his son, Eliab, his son, Jeroham, his son, Elkanah, his son, the sons of Samuel, the firstborn, Joel, and the second, Abijah, the sons of Merari, Malai, Libni, his son, Shimei, his son, Uzzah, his son, Shimea, his son, Haggaiah, his son, and Isaiah, his son. The Temple Musicians These are they whom David set over the service of song in the house of Yahweh, after that the ark had rest. They ministered with song before the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, until Solomon had built the house of Yahweh in Jerusalem, and they waited on their office according to their order. These are those who waited, and their sons. Of the sons of the Kohathites, Heman the singer, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, the son of Zuf, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tehath, the son of Aser, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. His brother Asaph, who stood on his right hand, even Asaph, the son of Berechiah, the son of Shimea, the son of Michael, the son of Baaseah, the son of Malchijah, the son of Ethni, the son of Zerah, the son of Adiah, the son of Ethan, the son of Zema, the son of Shimei, the son of Jahath, the son of Gershom, the son of Levi. On the left hand, their brothers, the sons of Merari, Ethan, the son of Kishai, the son of Abdi, the son of Maluk, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzai, the son of Bani, the son of Shemer, the son of Malai, 
the son of Mushai, the son of Merari, the son of Levi. Their brothers, the Levites, were appointed for all the service of the tabernacle of the house of God. Descendants of Aaron But Aaron and his sons offered on the altar of burnt offering and on the altar of incense for all the work of the most holy place and to make atonement for Israel according to all that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded. These are the sons of Aaron, Eleazar his son, Phinehas his son, Abishua his son, Buckai his son, Uzai his son, Zerahiah his son, Moraeth his son, Amariah his son, Ahitub his son, Zadok his son, Ahimaaz his son. Territory for the Levites Now these are their dwelling places, according to their encampments in their borders, to the sons of Aaron, of the families of the Kohathites, for theirs was the first lot. To them they gave Hebron in the land of Judah, and its suburbs around it. But the fields of the city and its villages they gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, to the sons of Aaron they gave the cities of refuge, Hebron, Libna, also with its suburbs, and Jadar, and Eshtemoah, with its suburbs, and Hylan, with its suburbs, Deber, with its suburbs, and Ashan, with its suburbs, and Beth Shemesh, with its suburbs, and out of the tribe of Benjamin, Geba, with its suburbs, and Alameth, with its suburbs and Anathoth with its suburbs. All their cities throughout their families were thirteen cities. To the rest of the sons of Kohath were given by lot, out of the family of the tribe, out of the half-tribe, the half of Manasseh, ten cities. To the sons of Gershom, according to their families, out of the tribe of Issachar, and out of the tribe of Asher, and out of the tribe of Naphtali, and out of the tribe of Manasseh in Bashan, thirteen cities. To the sons of Merari were given by lot, according to their families, out of the tribe of Reuben, and out of the tribe of Gad, and out of the tribe of Zebulun, twelve cities. The children of Israel gave to the Levites the cities with their suburbs, they gave by lot out of the tribe of the children of Judah, and out of the tribe of the children of Simeon, and out of the tribe of the children of Benjamin, these cities which are mentioned by name. Some of the families of the sons of Kohath had cities of their borders out of the tribe of Ephraim. They gave to them the cities of refuge, Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim with its suburbs, Gezer also with its suburbs, and Jogmeum with its suburbs, and Bethhoron with its suburbs, and Ijalon with its suburbs, and Gathrimon with its suburbs, and out of the half tribe of Manasseh, Aner with its suburbs, and Bilium with its suburbs, for the rest of the family of the sons of Kohath. To the sons of Gershom were given out of the family of the half-tribe of Manasseh, Golan in Bashan with its suburbs, and Ashtaroth with its suburbs, and out of the tribe of Issachar, Kedesh with its suburbs, Dabaroth with its suburbs, and Ramoth with its suburbs, and Anim with its suburbs, and out of the tribe of Asher, Mashal with its suburbs, and Abdon with its suburbs, and Hukok, with its suburbs, and Rehob, with its suburbs, and out of the tribe of Naphtali, Kedesh in Galilee, with its suburbs, and Hammon, with its suburbs, and Kiriathaim, with its suburbs. To the rest of the Levites, the sons of Merari were given, out of the tribe of Zebulun, Ramona, with its suburbs, Tabor, with its suburbs, 
and beyond the Jordan at Jericho, on the east side of the Jordan were given them, out of the tribe of Reuben, Bezer in the wilderness with its suburbs, and Jaza with its suburbs, and Kedemoth with its suburbs, and Mephaeth with its suburbs, and out of the tribe of Gad, Ramoth in Gilead with its suburbs, and Mahanaim with its suburbs, and Heshbon with its suburbs, and Jazer with its suburbs. Chapter 7 Descendants of Issachar Of the sons of Issachar, Tola and Pua, Jashub and Shimron. 4. The sons of Tola, Uzai and Rephaiah, and Jeriel, and Jamai, and Ibsam, and Shemuel, heads of their fathers' houses, to wit, of Tola, mighty men of valor in their generations. Their number in the days of David was twenty-two thousand six hundred. The sons of Uzai, Israhiah, the sons of Israhiah, Michael, and Obadiah, and Joel, Ashiah, five, all of them chief men, with them by their generations, after their fathers' houses, were bands of the army for war, thirty-six thousand, for they had many wives and sons. Their brothers among all the families of Issachar, mighty men of valor, reckoned in all by genealogy, were eighty-seven thousand. Descendants of Benjamin The sons of Benjamin, Bela and Beker, and Jediel, three. The sons of Bela, Esbon, and Uzai, and Uzziel, and Jeremoth, and Iri, five, heads of fathers' houses, mighty men of valor, and they were reckoned by genealogy twenty-two thousand thirty-four. The sons of Beker, Zemira, and Joash, Eliezer, and Elioenai, and Omri, and Jeremoth, and Abijah, and Anathoth, and Alameth. All these were the sons of Beker. They were reckoned by genealogy, after their generations, heads of their fathers' houses, mighty men of valor, twenty thousand two hundred. The sons of Jediel, Bilhan, the sons of Bilhan, Jeush, and Benjamin, and Ehud, and Canaana, and Zethan, and Tarshish, and Ahishahar. All these were sons of Jediel, according to the heads of their fathers' houses, mighty men of valor, seventeen thousand and two hundred, who were able to go forth in the army for war. Shuppim also, and Huppim, the sons of Ir, Hushim, the sons of Aher, the sons of Naphtali, the sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, and Gunai, and Jezer, and Shalom, the sons of Bilhah, descendants of Manasseh, the sons of Manasseh, Azrael, whom his concubine, the Aramitess, bore. She bore Mekur, the father of Gilead, and Mekur took a wife of Huppim and Shuppim, whose sister's name was Maacah, and the name of the second was Zelophehad, and Zelophehad had daughters. Maacah, the wife of Mekur, bore a son, and she named him Piresh, and the name of his brother was Sheresh, and his sons were Ulam and Rakam. 
the sons of Ulam, Bedan. These were the sons of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh. His sister, Hamolaketh, bore Ishbad, and Abiezer, and Mala. The sons of Shemida were Ahian, and Shechem, and Lekai, and Anayim. Descendants of Ephraim The sons of Ephraim, Shuthala, and Beret, his son, and Tehath, his son, and Eliada, his son, and Tehath, his son, and Zabad, his son, and Shuthala, his son, and Ezer, and Eliad, whom the men of Gath, who were born in the land, killed, because they came down to take away their livestock. Ephraim, their father, mourned many days, and his brothers came to comfort him. He went in to his wife, and she conceived, and bore a son, and he named him Bariah, because it went evil with his house. His daughter was Shira, who built Beth Horon, the lower and the upper, and Uzan Shira. Repha was his son, and Reshef, and Tila his son, and Tahan his son, Laden his son, Amihud his son, Elishama his son, Nun his son, Joshua his son. Their possessions and habitations were Bethel and its towns, and eastward Naaran, and westward Gezer with its towns, Shechem also and its towns, to Azza and its towns, and by the borders of the children of Manasseh, Bethshean and its towns, Teanak and its towns, Megiddo and its towns, Dor and its towns. In these lived the children of Joseph, the son of Israel. The sons of Asher, Emna, and Ishva, and Ishvai, and Bariah, and Sira, their sister. The sons of Bariah, Heber, and Malkiel, who was the father of Birzaeth. Heber became the father of Japhlet, and Shomer, and Hotham, and Shua, their sister. The sons of Japhlet, Pesach, and Bimhal, and Ashvath, these are the children of Japhlet. The sons of Shemer, Ahai, and Roga, Jehubba, and Aram. The sons of Helam, his brother, Zopha, and Emna, and Shelesh, and Amal. The sons of Zopha, Sua, and Harnifer, and Shuel, and Birai, and Emra, Bezer, and Had, and Shema, and Shilsha, and Ithran, and Bira, the sons of Jether, Jephana, and Pispa, and Ara, the sons of Ulla, Ara, and Haniel, and Reziah. All these were the children of Asher, heads of the fathers' houses, choice and mighty men of valor, chief of the princes. The number of them reckoned by genealogy for service in war was twenty-six thousand men. Chapter 8 Genealogy from Benjamin to Saul Benjamin became the father of Bela, his firstborn, Ashbel the second, and Ahara the third, Noah the fourth, and Rapha the fifth. Bela had sons, Adar, and Gera, and Abihud, and Abishua, and Naaman, and Ahoa, and Gera, and Shephuphan, and Huram. These are the sons of Ehud. 
These are the heads of fathers' houses, of the inhabitants of Geba. And they carried them captive to Manahath. And Naaman and Ahijah and Gera, he carried them captive. And he became the father of Uzzah and Ahihud. Shehoram became the father of children in the field of Moab, after he had sent them away. Husham and Bera were his wives. He became the father of Hodesh, his wife, Jobab, and Zibiah, and Misha, and Malcolm, and Jeuz, and Shekiah, and Mermah. These were his sons, heads of fathers' houses. Of Husham he became the father of Abitub and Elpal, the sons of Elpal, Eber, and Misham, and Shemed, who built Ono and Lod, with its towns, and Beriah and Shema, who were heads of fathers' houses of the inhabitants of Ajalon, who put to flight the inhabitants of Gath, and Ahio, Sheshach, and Jeremoth, and Zebadiah, and Arad, and Eder, and Michael, and Ishpa, and Joha, the sons of Beriah, and Zebadiah, and Meshulam, and Hezkai, and Heber, and Ishmarai, and Isliah, and Jobab, the sons of Elpal, and Jacob, and Zikri, and Zabdi, and Elienai, and Zilathi, and Eliel, and Adiah, and Berea, and Shimrath, the sons of Shimei, and Ishpan, and Eber, and Eliel, and Abdon, and Zikri, and Hanan, and Hananiah, and Elam, and Anthothijah, and Iphdia, and Penuel, the sons of Sheshach, and Shamshari, and Shehariah, and Athaliah, and Jerishiah, and Elijah, and Zikri, the sons of Jeroham. These were heads of fathers' houses throughout their generations, chief men, these lived in Jerusalem. In Gibeon there lived the father of Gibeon, Jeiel, whose wife's name was Maacah, and his firstborn son Abdon, and Zer, and Kish, and Baal, and Nadab, and Gedor, and Ahio, and Zeker. Mikloth became the father of Shimea. They also lived with their brothers in Jerusalem, over against their brothers. Genealogy from King Saul Ner became the father of Kish, and Kish became the father of Saul, and Saul became the father of Jonathan, and Malkishua, and Abinadab, and Eshbaal. The son of Jonathan was Merib Baal, and Mayor Baal became the father of Micah, the sons of Micah, Python, and Melech, and Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz became the father of Jehoiada, and Jehoiada became the father of Alameth, and Asmaveth, and Zemri, and Zemri became the father of Moza. Moza became the father of Benia. Rapha was his son, Eliasa his son, Azel his son. Azel had six sons, whose names are these, Azrakam, Bakaru, and Ishmael, and Shiariah, and Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel, the sons of Eshek his brother, Ulam his firstborn, Jeush the second, Eliphalet the third. The sons of Ulam were mighty men of valor, archers, and had many sons, and sons' sons, one hundred fifty. 
All these were of the sons of Benjamin. Chapter 9 People of Jerusalem So all Israel were reckoned by genealogies, and behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel, and Judah was carried away captive to Babylon for their disobedience. Now the first inhabitants who lived in their possessions, in their cities, were Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the Nethanim. In Jerusalem lived of the children of Judah, and of the children of Benjamin, and of the children of Ephraim and Manasseh, Uthai, the son of Amihud, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Benai, of the children of Perez, the son of Judah. Of the Shilonites, Isaiah, the firstborn, and his sons. Of the sons of Zerah, Jeuel, and their brothers, 690. Of the sons of Benjamin, Salu, the son of Meshulam, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hasanua, and Ibnim, the son of Jeroham, and Elah, the son of Uzai, the son of Mikri, and Meshulam, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnijah, and their brothers, according to their generations. 956. All these men were heads of fathers' households by their fathers' houses. The Returning Priests of the priests, Jedeah, and Jehoiarib, Jachin, and Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Meraioth, the son of Ahitab, the ruler of the house of God, and Adiah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Pasher, the son of Malchijah, and Maasai, the son of Adiel, the son of Jazara, the son of Meshulam, the son of Meshulameth, the son of Emmer, and their brothers, heads of their fathers' houses, 1,760, very able men for the work of the service of the house of God. The Returning Levites Of the Levites Shemaiah, the son of Hashub, the son of Azricam, the son of Hashabiah, of the sons of Merari, and Bagbacher, Hirish, and Galil, and Mataniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph, and Obadiah, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Galil, the son of Jeduthun, and Berechiah, the son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, who lived in the villages of the Netophathites. Gatekeepers in Jerusalem The porters, Shalom, and Akub, and Talman, and Ahiman, and their brothers. Shalom was the chief, who hitherto waited in the king's gate eastward. They were the porters for the camp of the children of Levi. Shalom, the son of Kori, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, and his brothers, of his father's house. The Korahites were over the work of the service, keepers of the thresholds of the tent. And their fathers had been over the camp of Yahweh, keepers of the entry. Phineas, the son of Eleazar, was ruler over them in time past, and Yahweh was with him. Zechariah, the son of Meshulamiah, was porter of the door of the tent of meeting. All these who were chosen to be porters in the thresholds were two hundred and twelve. These were reckoned by genealogy in their villages, whom David and Samuel the seer did ordain in their office of trust. So they and their children had the oversight of the gates of the house of Yahweh, even the house of the tent, by wards. On the four sides were the porters, 
toward the east, west, north, and south. Their brothers and their villages were to come in every seven days from time to time to be with them. For the four chief porters, who were Levites, were in an office of trust, and were over the rooms and over the treasuries in the house of God. They lodged around the house of God, because that duty was on them, and to them pertained its opening, morning by morning. Certain of them were in charge of the vessels of service, for by count were these brought in, and by count were these taken out. Some of them also were appointed over the furniture, and over all the vessels of the sanctuary, and over the fine flour, and the wine, and the oil, and the frankincense, and the spices. Some of the sons of the priests prepared the confection of the spices. Mattathiah, one of the Levites, who was the firstborn of Shalom the Korahite, had the office of trust over the things that were baked in pans. Some of their brothers, of the sons of the Kohathites, were over the showbread, to prepare it every Sabbath. These are the singers, heads of fathers' houses of the Levites, who lived in the rooms and were free from other service, for they were employed in their work day and night. These were heads of fathers' houses of the Levites, throughout their generations, chief men. These lived at Jerusalem. Descendants of Saul In Gibeon there lived the father of Gibeon, Jeiel, whose wife's name was Maacah, and his firstborn son, Abdon, and Zer, and Kish, and Baal, and Ner, and Nadab, and Geder, and Ahio, and Zechariah, and Mikloth. Megloth became the father of Shimeim. They also lived with their brothers in Jerusalem, over against their brothers. Ner became the father of Kish, and Kish became the father of Saul, and Saul became the father of Jonathan, and Malkishua, and Abinadab, and Eshbaal. The son of Jonathan was Merubbaal, and Merubbaal became the father of Micah. The sons of Micah, Python, and Melech, and Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz became the father of Jarrah, and Jarrah became the father of Alimeth, and Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri became the father of Moza, and Moza became the father of Benia, and Rephaiah, his son, Eleasa, his son. Azel, his son. Azel had six sons, whose names are these, Azricam, Bakaru, and Ishmael, and Sheariah, and Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Chapter 10 Saul's Overthrow and Death now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell down slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines followed hard after Saul and after his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan and Abinadab and Malkishua, the sons of Saul. The battle went hard against Saul and the archers overtook him, and he was distressed by reason of the archers. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword, and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was terrified. Therefore Saul took his sword and fell on it. When his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he likewise fell on his sword and died. So Saul died and his three sons, and all his house died together. The Philistines possessed the towns. When all the men of Israel who were in the valley saw that they fled, 
and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook their cities and fled, and the Philistines came and lived in them. It happened on the next day, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They stripped him and took his head and his armor and sent into the land of the Philistines all around to carry the news to their idols and to the people. They put his armor in the house of their gods and fastened his head in the house of Dagon. Jabesh Gilead's Tribute to Saul when all Jabesh Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and took away the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons, and brought them to Jabesh, and buried their bones under the oak in Jabesh, and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his trespass which he committed against Yahweh, because of the word of Yahweh which he didn't keep, and also because he asked counsel of one who had a familiar spirit to inquire thereby, and didn't inquire of Yahweh. Therefore he killed him, and turned the kingdom to David, the son of Jesse. Chapter 11 David Becomes King Over All Israel then all Israel gathered themselves to David, to Hebron, saying, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. In times past, even when Saul was king, it was you who led out and brought in Israel. Yahweh your God said to you, You shall be shepherd of my people Israel, and you shall be prince over my people Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king, to Hebron, and David made a covenant with them in Hebron before Yahweh. And they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of Yahweh by Samuel. David conquers Jerusalem. David and all Israel went to Jerusalem. The same is Jebus. And the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, were there. The inhabitants of Jebus said to David, You shall not come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. The same is the city of David. David said, Whoever strikes the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, went up first and was made chief. David lived in the stronghold. Therefore they called it the city of David. He built the city all around, from Milo even around. And Joab repaired the rest of the city. David grew greater and greater, for Yahweh of armies was with him. David's Mightiest Warriors now these are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who showed themselves strong with him in his kingdom, together with all Israel, to make him king, according to the word of Yahweh concerning Israel. This is the number of the mighty men whom David had. Jeshobiam, the son of a Hagmonite, the chief of the thirty, he lifted up his spear against three hundred and killed them at one time. After him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, who was one of the three mighty men. He was with David at Pasdamim, and there the Philistines were gathered together to battle, where there was a plot of ground full of barley, and the people fled from before the Philistines. They stood in the midst of the plot, and defended it, and killed the Philistines, and Yahweh saved them by great victory. Three of the thirty chief men went down to the rock, to David, into the cave of Adullam, 
and the army of the Philistines were encamped in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me water to drink of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. The three broke through the army of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. But David would not drink of it, but poured it out to Yahweh and said, My God forbid it me that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of these men who have put their lives in jeopardy? For they risked their lives to bring it. Therefore he would not drink it. The three mighty men did these things. David's Thirty Mighty Men Abishai, the brother of Joab, he was chief of the three. For he lifted up his spear against three hundred and killed them and had a name among the three. Of the three, he was more honorable than the two, and was made their captain. However, he didn't attain to the first three. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done mighty deeds, he killed the two sons of Ariel of Moab. He went down also and killed a lion in the midst of a pit, in time of snow, he killed an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits high, and in the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam. And he went down to him with a staff, and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and killed him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and had a name among the three mighty men. Behold, he was more honorable than the thirty, but he didn't attain to the first three. And David set him over his guard. Also the mighty men of the armies, Azahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shamoth, the Hararite, Helez, the Pelonite, Ira, the son of Ikish, the Tekoite, Abiezer, the Anathothite, Sibachai, the Hushathite, Eli, the Ahohite, Meharai, the Natophathite, Heled, the son of Baana, the Natophathite, Ithai, the son of Ribai of Gibeah, of the children of Benjamin, Benaiah, the Pirathonite, Hurai, of the brooks of Gaash, Abiel, the Arbathite, Asmaveth, the Baharamite, Eliaba, the Shealbanite, the sons of Hashem, the Gizonite, Jonathan, the son of Shagi, the Hararite, Ahiam, the son of Sakar, the Hararite, Eliphal, the son of Ur, Hefer, the Macarathite, Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Naarai, the son of Esbai, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mibhar, the son of Hagrai, Zelek, the Ammonite, Naharai, the Barathite, the armor-bearer of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, Ira, the Ithrite, Garab, the Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, Zabad, the son of Ali, Adonah, the son of Shiza, the Reubenite, a chief of the Reubenites, and thirty with him, Hanan, the son of Maacah, and Joshaphat, the Mithnite, Uzziah, the Ashtorethite, Shema, and Jeiel, the sons of Hotham, the Ararite, Jediel, the son of Shimri, and Joha, his brother, the Tizite, Eliel, the Mehavite, and Jerabai, and Joshaviah, the sons of Elnaim, and Ithma, the Moabite, Eliel, and Obed, and Jeaziel, the Mesobeite. Chapter 12 
the mighty men joined David at Ziklag. Now these are those who came to David, to Ziklag, while he yet kept himself close, because of Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, his helpers in war. They were armed with bows, and could use both the right hand and the left in slinging stones and in shooting arrows from the bow. They were of Saul's brothers of Benjamin. The chief was Ahiezer, then Joash, the sons of Shemaiah, the Gibeathite, and Jeziel, and Pelet, the sons of Asmaveth, and Barakah, and Jehu, the Anathothite, and Ishmaiah, the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty, and over the thirty, and Jeremiah, and Jehaziel, and Johanan, and Josabad, the Gadarathite, and Eluzi, and Jeremoth, and Bealiah, and Shemariah, and Shephatiah, the Heruphite, Elkanah, and Ishiah, and Azarel, and Joezer, and Jeshobiam, the Korahites, and Joelah, and Zebadiah, the sons of Jeroham of Gedor. Of the Gadites there separated themselves to David to the stronghold in the wilderness, mighty men of valor, men trained for war that could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and they were as swift as the rose on the mountains. Ezer the chief, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, Magbani the eleventh. These of the sons of Gad were captains of the army. He who was least was equal to one hundred, and the greatest to one thousand. These are those who went over the Jordan in the first month, when it had overflowed all its banks, and they put to flight all them of the valleys, both toward the east and toward the west. There came of the children of Benjamin and Judah to the stronghold to David. David went out to meet them and answered them, If you have come peaceably to me to help me, my heart shall be knit to you. But if you have come to betray me to my adversaries, since there is no wrong in my hands, May the God of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it. Then the Spirit came on Amasai, who was chief of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, David, and on your side, you son of Jesse. Peace, peace be to you, and peace be to your helpers, for your God helps you. Then David received them and made them captains of the band. Of Manasseh also there fell away some to David, when he came with the Philistines against Saul to battle. But they didn't help them, for the lords of the Philistines sent him away after consultation, saying, He will fall away to his master Saul, to the jeopardy of our heads. As he went to Ziklag, there fell to him of Manasseh, Adna, and Josabad, and Jediel, and Michael, and Josabad, and Elihu, and Zilathai, captains of thousands who were of Manasseh. They helped David against the band of rovers, for they were all mighty men of valor, and were captains in the army. For from day to day men came to David to help him until there was a great army, like the army of God. David's army grows at Hebron.
These are the numbers of the heads of those who were armed for war, who came to David, to Hebron, to turn the kingdom of Saul to him, according to the word of Yahweh. The children of Judah, who bore shield and spear, were six thousand and eight hundred, armed for war. Of the children of Simeon, mighty men of valor for the war, seven thousand and one hundred. Of the children of Levi, four thousand and six hundred. Jehoiada was the leader of the house of Aaron, and with him were three thousand and seven hundred. And Zadok, a young man, mighty of valor, and of his father's house, twenty-two captains. Of the children of Benjamin, the brothers of Saul, three thousand. For hitherto the greatest part of them had kept their allegiance to the house of Saul. Of the children of Ephraim, twenty thousand eight hundred. Mighty men of valor, famous men in their father's houses. Of the half-tribe of Manasseh, eighteen thousand, who were mentioned by name to come and make David king. Of the children of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brothers were at their command. Of Zebulun, such as were able to go out in the army, who could set the battle in array, with all kinds of instruments of war, fifty thousand, and who could order the battle array, and were not of double heart. Of Naphtali, one thousand captains, and with them, with shield and spear, thirty-seven thousand. Of the Danites, who could set the battle in array, twenty-eight thousand six hundred. Of Asher, such as were able to go out in the army, who could set the battle in array, forty thousand. On the other side of the Jordan, of the Reubenites and the Gadites, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, with all kinds of instruments of war for the battle, one hundred twenty thousand. All these being men of war, who could order the battle array, came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. They were there with David three days, eating and drinking, for their brothers had made preparation for them. Moreover, those who were near to them, even as far as Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, brought bread on donkeys and on camels, and on mules, and on oxen, food of meal, cakes of figs, and clusters of raisins, and wine, and oil, and cattle, and sheep in abundance, for there was joy in Israel. Chapter 13 David Fetches the Ark David consulted with the captains of thousands and of hundreds, even with every leader. David said to all the assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it is of Yahweh our God, let us send abroad everywhere to our brothers who are left in all the land of Israel, with whom the priests and Levites are in their cities that have suburbs, that they may gather themselves to us. And let us bring again the ark of our God to us, for we didn't seek it in the days of Saul. All the assembly said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David assembled all Israel together, from the Shihor, the brook of Egypt, even to the entrance of Hamath, to bring the ark of God from Kiriath-Jerim. David went up, and all Israel, to Baala, that is, to Kiriath-Jerim, which belonged to Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God Yahweh that sits above the cherubim, that is called by the name. 
They carried the ark of God on a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab. And Uzzah and Ahio drove the cart. David and all Israel played before God with all their might, even with songs and with harps and with stringed instruments and with tambourines and with cymbals and with trumpets. Uzzah and the Ark When they came to the threshing floor of Kaidan, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. The anger of Yahweh was kindled against Uzzah, and he struck him, because he put forth his hand to the ark, and there he died before God. David was displeased, because Yahweh had broken forth on Uzzah, and he called that place Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of God that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of God home to me? So David didn't move the ark to him into the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months, and Yahweh blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. Chapter 14 David's Family Grows Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and masons, and carpenters, to build him a house. David perceived that Yahweh had established him king over Israel, for his kingdom was exalted on high, for his people Israel's sake. David took more wives at Jerusalem, and David became the father of more sons and daughters. These are the names of the children whom he had in Jerusalem, Shamua, and Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon, and Ibhar, and Elishua, and Elpilet, and Noga, and Nepheg, and Japhiah, and Elishema, and Beeliada, and Eliphalet. Two Victories Over the Philistines When the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David, and David heard of it and went out against them. Now the Philistines had come and made a raid in the valley of Rephaim, David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? Yahweh said to him, Go up, for I will deliver them into your hand. So they came up to baal Perazim, and David struck them there. And David said, God has broken my enemies by my hand like the breach of waters. Therefore they called the name of that place baal Perazim. They left their gods there, and David gave command, and they were burned with fire. The Philistines yet again made a raid in the valley. David inquired again of God, and God said to him, You shall not go up after them. Turn away from them and come on them over against the mulberry trees. It shall be, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then you shall go out to battle, for God has gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. David did as God commanded him, and they struck the army of the Philistines, from Gibeon even to Gezer. The fame of David went out into all lands, and Yahweh brought the fear of him on all nations. Chapter 15 Preparations to Move the Ark to Jerusalem David made him houses in the city of David, and he prepared a place for the ark of God, and pitched for it a tent. Then David said, 
No one ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. For Yahweh has chosen them to carry the ark of God and to minister to him forever. David assembled all Israel at Jerusalem to bring up the ark of Yahweh to its place, which he had prepared for it. David gathered together the sons of Aaron and the Levites, of the sons of Kohath, Uriel the chief, and his brothers, 120, of the sons of Merari, Isaiah the chief, and his brothers, 220, of the sons of Gershom, Joel the chief, and his brothers, 130, of the sons of Elizaphan, Shemaiah the chief, and his brothers, 200, of the sons of Hebron, Eliel the chief, and his brothers, 80, of the sons of Uzziel, Amenadab the chief, and his brothers, 112, David called for Zadok and Abiathar the priests, and for the Levites, for Uriel, Isaiah, and Joel, Shemaiah, and Eliel, and Amenadab, and said to them, You are the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both you and your brothers, that you may bring up the ark of Yahweh, the God of Israel to the place that I have prepared for it. For because you didn't carry it at first, Yahweh our God broke out against us in anger, because we didn't seek him according to the ordinance. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of Yahweh, the God of Israel. The priests and Levites carry the ark. The children of the Levites bore the ark of God on their shoulders with the poles thereon, as Moses commanded according to the word of Yahweh. David spoke to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brothers, the singers, with instruments of music, stringed instruments, and harps, and cymbals, sounding aloud and lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed Heman, the son of Joel, and of his brothers, Asaph, the son of Berechiah, and of the sons of Merari, their brothers, Ethan, the son of Cushea, and with them their brothers of the second degree, Zechariah, Ben, and Jeaziel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Unai, Eliab, and Benaiah, and Maaseah, and Mattathiah, and Eliphalehu, and Megniah, and Obed-Edom, and Jeiel, the doorkeepers. So the singers, Heman, Asaph, and Ethan, were appointed with cymbals of brass to sound aloud, and Zechariah, and Aziel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Unai, and Eliab, and Maaseah, and Benaiah, with stringed instruments set to Elamoth, and Mattathiah, and Eliphalehu, and Megniah, and Obed-Edom, and Jeiel, and Azaziah, with harps tuned to the eight-stringed lyre to lead. Keneah, chief of the Levites, was over the song. He instructed about the song because he was skillful. Berechiah and Elkanah were doorkeepers for the ark. Shebaniah and Joshaphat and Nethanel and Amasai and Zechariah and Benaiah and Eliezer, the priests, did blow the trumpets before the ark of God, and Obed-Edom and Jehiah were doorkeepers for the ark. Moving the ark to Jerusalem So David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands went to bring up the ark of the covenant of Yahweh 
out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy. It happened when God helped the Levites who bore the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh, that they sacrificed seven bulls and seven rams. David was clothed with a robe of fine linen, and all the Levites who bore the Ark, and the singers, and Kenaniah, the master of the song with the singers, and David had on him an ephod of linen. Thus all Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh with shouting, and with sound of the cornet, and with trumpets, and with cymbals, sounding aloud with stringed instruments and harps. It happened as the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh came to the city of David, that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out at the window and saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. Chapter 16 A Tent for the Ark They brought in the Ark of God, and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before God. When David had made an end of offering the burnt offering and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of Yahweh. He dealt to everyone of Israel, both man and woman, to everyone a loaf of bread and a portion of flesh and a cake of raisins. He appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of Yahweh, and to celebrate and to thank and praise Yahweh, the God of Israel. Asaph the chief, and second to him, Zechariah, Jeiel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Mattathiah, and Eliab, and Benaiah, and Obed-Edom, and Jeiel, with stringed instruments and with harps, and Asaph with cymbals sounding aloud, and Benaiah, and Jehaziel, the priests, with trumpets continually, before the ark of the covenant of God. David's Psalm of Thanksgiving Then on that day David first ordained to give thanks to Yahweh by the hand of Asaph and his brothers. O oh, give thanks to Yahweh, call on his name, make his doings known among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, Tell of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek Yahweh rejoice. Seek Yahweh and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. You seed of Israel, his servant. You children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is Yahweh our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham, his oath to Isaac. He confirmed the same to Jacob for a statute and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, I will give you the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When you were but a few men in number, yes, very few, and foreigners were in it. They went about from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people. He allowed no man to do them wrong. Yes, he reproved kings for their sakes. Don't touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Sing to Yahweh all the earth. Display his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is Yahweh and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but Yahweh made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Ascribe to Yahweh, you relatives of the peoples. Ascribe to Yahweh glory and strength. 
Ascribe to Yahweh the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship Yahweh in holy array. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world also is established that it can't be moved. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let them say among the nations, Yahweh reigns. Let the sea roar and its fullness. Let the field exult and all that is therein. Then the trees of the forest will sing for joy before Yahweh, for he comes to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Say, Save us, God of our salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, from everlasting even to everlasting. All the people said, Amen, and praised Yahweh. Worship Before the Ark So he left there, before the ark of the covenant of Yahweh, Asaph and his brothers, to minister before the ark, continually, as every day's work required, and Obed-Edom with their brothers, 68. Obed-Edom also, the son of Jeduthun and Hosa, to be doorkeepers, and Zadok the priest, and his brothers the priests, before the tabernacle of Yahweh, in the high place that was at Gibeon, to offer burnt offerings to Yahweh on the altar of burnt offering, continually, morning and evening even according to all that is written in the law of Yahweh, which he commanded to Israel. And with them Heman and Jeduthun, and the rest who were chosen, who were mentioned by name, to give thanks to Yahweh, because his loving kindness endures forever. And with them Heman and Jeduthun, with trumpets and cymbals, for those that should sound aloud, and with instruments for the songs of God, and the sons of Jeduthun to be at the gate. All the people departed, every man to his house, and David returned to bless his house. Chapter 17 God's Covenant with David It happened, when David lived in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Behold, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of Yahweh is under curtains. Nathan said to David, Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. It happened the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David my servant. Thus says Yahweh, you shall not build me a house to dwell in, for I have not lived in a house since the day that I brought up Israel to this day, but have gone from tent to tent, and from one tent to another, in all places in which I have walked with all Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to be shepherd of my people, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore you shall tell my servant David, Thus says Yahweh of armies, I took you from the sheep pen, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. I will make you a name, like the name of the great ones who are in the earth. I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in their own place, and be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the first. And from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, 
and I will subdue all your enemies. Moreover, I tell you that Yahweh will build you a house. It shall happen, when your days are fulfilled, that you must go to be with your fathers, that I will set up your seed after you, who shall be of your sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. I will not take my loving kindness away from him, as I took it from him that was before you. But I will settle him in my house and in my kingdom forever. His throne shall be established forever. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. David's Prayer Then David the king went in, and sat before Yahweh, and he said, who am I, Yahweh God, and what is my house, that you have brought me thus far? This was a small thing in your eyes, God, but you have spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come, and have respected me according to the estate of a man of high degree, Yahweh God. What can David say yet more to you concerning the honor which is done to your servant? For you know your servant." Yahweh, for your servant's sake, and according to your own heart, you have worked all this greatness to make known all these great things. Yahweh, there is none like you, neither is there any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. What one nation in the earth is like your people Israel, whom God went to redeem to himself for a people? to make you a name by great and awesome things, in driving out nations from before your people, whom you redeem out of Egypt. For your people Israel, you made your own people forever, and you, Yahweh, became their God. Now, Yahweh, let the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house be established forever, and do as you have spoken. Let your name be established and magnified forever, saying, Yahweh of armies is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel. The house of David, your servant, is established before you. For you, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build him a house. Therefore, your servant has found courage to pray before you. Now, Yahweh, you are God, and have promised this good thing to your servant. Now it has pleased you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever before you. For you, Yahweh, have blessed, and it is blessed forever. Chapter 18 David's Triumphs After this it happened, that David struck the Philistines, and subdued them, and took Gath and its towns out of the hand of the Philistines. He struck Moab, and the Moabites became servants to David, and brought tribute. David struck Hadad-ezer, king of Zobah, to Hamath, as he went to establish his dominion by the river Euphrates. David took from him one thousand chariots, and seven thousand horsemen, and twenty thousand footmen. And David hamstrung all the chariot horses, but reserved of them for one hundred chariots. When the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadad-ezer king of Zobah, David struck of the Syrians twenty-two thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought tribute. Yahweh gave victory to David wherever he went. David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. From Tibhath and from Kun, cities of Hadadezer, 
David took very much brass, with which Solomon made the bronze sea, and the pillars, and the vessels of brass. When, too, king of Hamath heard that David had struck all the army of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, he sent Hadoram, his son, to king David, to greet him, and to bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and struck him, for Hadadezer had wars with two. And he had with him all kinds of vessels of gold, and silver, and brass. These also did King David dedicate to Yahweh, with the silver and the gold that he carried away from all the nations, from Edom, and from Moab, and from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines, and from Amalek. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, struck of the Edomites in the Valley of Salt eighteen thousand. He put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became servants to David. Yahweh gave victory to David wherever he went. David's Officers David reigned over all Israel, and he executed justice and righteousness to all his people. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the army, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilut, was recorder, and Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Abimelech, the son of Abiathar, were priests, and Shavsha was scribe, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Carathites and the Pelathites, and the sons of David were chief about the king. Chapter 19 David's Messengers Disgraced It happened after this that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, died, and his son reigned in his place. David said, I will show kindness to Hanan, the son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. So David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father. David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon, to Hanan, to comfort him. But the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanan, Do you think that David honors your father, in that he has sent comforters to you? Haven't his servants come to you to search, to overthrow, and to spy out the land? So Hanan took David's servants and shaved them, and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. Then there went certain persons and told David how the men were served. He sent to meet them, for the men were greatly ashamed. The king said, Stay at Jericho until your beards have grown, and then return. When the children of Ammon saw that they had made themselves odious to David, Hanan and the children of Ammon sent one thousand talents of silver to hire them chariots and horsemen out of Mesopotamia, and out of Aramaica, and out of Zobah. So they hired for themselves thirty-two thousand chariots, and the king of Maacah and his people, who came and encamped before Medeba. The children of Ammon gathered themselves together from their cities, and came to battle. When David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the army of the mighty men. The children of Ammon came out, and put the battle in array at the gate of the city. And the kings who had come were by themselves in the field. David defeats Ammon and Syria. Now when Joab saw that the battle was set against him before and behind, he chose of all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. The rest of the people he committed into the hand of Abishai his brother, and they put themselves in array against the children of Ammon. He said, if the Syrians are too strong for me, then you are to help me. But if the children of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will help you. Be courageous, and let us be strong for our people, and for the cities of our God. 
may Yahweh do that which seems good to him. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near before the Syrians to the battle, and they fled before him. When the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians had fled, they likewise fled before Abishai his brother and entered into the city. Then Joab came to Jerusalem. When the Syrians saw that they were defeated by Israel, they sent messengers and drew forth the Syrians who were beyond the river, with Shophak, the captain of the army of Hadadezer, at their head. It was told David, and he gathered all Israel together, and passed over the Jordan, and came on them, and set the battle in array against them. So when David had put the battle in array against the Syrians, they fought with him. The Syrians fled before Israel, and David killed of the Syrians the men of seven thousand chariots and forty thousand footmen, and killed Shophak, the captain of the army. When the servants of Hadadezer saw that they were defeated by Israel, they made peace with David and served him. Neither would the Syrians help the children of Ammon any more. Chapter 20 The Plunder of Rabbah It happened at the time of the return of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that Joab led forth the army and wasted the country of the children of Ammon and came and besieged Rabbah. But David stayed at Jerusalem. Joab struck Rabbah and overthrew it, David took the crown of their king from off his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold, and there were precious stones in it, and it was set on David's head. And he brought forth the spoil of the city, exceeding much. He brought forth the people who were therein and cut them with saws and with iron picks and with axes. David did so to all the cities of the children of Ammon. David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Philistine Giants Slain It happened after this that there arose war at Gezer with the Philistines. Then Sibachai the Hushathite killed Sippai of the sons of the giant, and they were subdued. There was again war with the Philistines, and Elhanan, the son of Jair, killed Lamai, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. There was again war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were twenty-four, six on each hand and six on each foot and he also was born to the giant. When he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, David's brother, killed him. These were born to the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Chapter 21 David Forces a Census Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. David said to Joab and to the princes of the people, Go, number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, and bring me word that I may know the psalm of them. Joab said, May Yahweh make his people a hundred times as many as they are, but my lord the king, aren't they all my lord's servants? Why does my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of guilt to Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Therefore Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. Joab gave up the sum of the numbering of the people to David. All those of Israel were one million one hundred thousand men who drew sword. And in Judah were 470,000 men who drew sword. But he didn't count Levi and Benjamin among them. 
for the king's word was abominable to Joab. Judgment for David's Sin God was displeased with this thing, therefore he struck Israel. David said to God, I have sinned greatly in that I have done this thing. But now put away, I beg you, the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. Yahweh spoke to Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and speak to David, saying, Thus says Yahweh, I offer you three things. Choose one of them, that I may do it to you. So Gad came to David and said to him, Thus says Yahweh, Take your choice, either three years of famine, or three months to be consumed before your foes, while the sword of your enemies overtakes you, or else three days the sword of Yahweh, even pestilence in the land, and the angel of Yahweh destroying throughout all the borders of Israel. Now therefore, consider what answer I shall return to him who sent me. David said to Gad, I am in distress. Let me fall, I pray, into the hand of Yahweh, for his mercies are very great. Let me not fall into the hand of man. David's repentance spares Jerusalem. So Yahweh sent a pestilence on Israel, and seventy thousand men of Israel fell. God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. As he was about to destroy, Yahweh saw, and he relented of the disaster, and said to the destroying angel, It is enough. Now stay your hand. The angel of Yahweh was standing by the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of Yahweh standing between earth and the sky, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell on their faces. David said to God, Isn't it I who commanded the people to be numbered? It is even I who have sinned and done very wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand, O Yahweh my God, be against me and against my father's house, but not against your people that they should be plagued. David Builds an Altar Then the angel of Yahweh commanded Gad to tell David that David should go up and raise an altar to Yahweh in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spoke in the name of Yahweh. Ornan turned back and saw the angel, and his four sons, who were with him, hid themselves. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. As David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David, and went out of the threshing floor, and bowed himself to David, with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Give me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build thereon an altar to Yahweh. You shall sell it to me for the full price that the plague may be stopped from afflicting the people. Ornan said to David, Take it for yourself, and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. Behold, I give the oxen for burnt offerings, and the threshing instruments for wood, and the wheat for the meal offering. I give it all. King David said to Ornan, No but I will most certainly buy it for the full price, for I will not take that which is yours for Yahweh, nor offer a burnt offering without cost. So David gave to Ornan six hundred shekels of gold by weight for the place. David built an altar to Yahweh there, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called on Yahweh, and he answered him from the sky, by fire on the altar of burnt offering. Yahweh commanded the angel, and he put up his sword again into its sheath. At that time, 
when David saw that Yahweh had answered him in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Then he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of Yahweh, which Moses made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering, were at that time in the high place at Gibeon. But David couldn't go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of Yahweh. Chapter 22 David's Preparations for the Temple Then David said, This is the house of Yahweh God, and this is the altar of burnt offering for Israel. David gave orders to gather together the foreigners who were in the land of Israel, and he set masons to cut worked stones to build the house of God. David prepared iron in abundance for the nails, for the doors of the gates, and for the couplings, and brass in abundance without weight, and cedar trees without number. For the Sidonians and they of Tyre brought cedar trees in abundance to David. David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for Yahweh must be exceedingly magnificent, of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. Solomon anointed to build the temple. Then he called for Solomon his son, and commanded him to build a house for Yahweh, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon his son, As for me, it was in my heart to build a house to the name of Yahweh my God. But the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, You have shed blood abundantly, and have made great wars. You shall not build a house to my name, because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to you, who shall be a man of rest. I will give him rest from all his enemies all around, for his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, may Yahweh be with you and prosper you, and build the house of Yahweh your God as he has spoken concerning you. May Yahweh give you discretion and understanding, and put you in charge of Israel, that so you may keep the law of Yahweh your God. Then you will prosper if you observe to do the statutes and the ordinances which Yahweh gave Moses concerning Israel. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. Now, behold, in my affliction I have prepared for the house of Yahweh one hundred thousand talents of gold, one million talents of silver, and brass and iron without weight, for it is in abundance. I have also prepared timber and stone, and you may add to them. There are also workmen with you in abundance, cutters and workers of stone and timber, and all kinds of men who are skillful in every kind of work, of the gold, the silver, and the brass, and the iron. There is no number. Arise and be doing, and may Yahweh be with you. David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, Isn't Yahweh your God with you? Hasn't he given you rest on every side? For he has delivered the inhabitants of the land into my hand, and the land is subdued before Yahweh and before his people. Now set your heart and your soul to seek after Yahweh your God. Arise, therefore, and build the sanctuary of Yahweh God, to bring the ark of the covenant of Yahweh and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of Yahweh. Chapter 23 Solomon Reigns 
Now David was old and full of days, and he made Solomon his son king over Israel. He gathered together all the princes of Israel with the priests and the Levites. Divisions of the Levites The Levites were numbered from thirty years old and upward, and their number by their poles, man by man, was thirty-eight thousand. David said, Of these, twenty-four thousand were to oversee the work of the house of Yahweh, six thousand were officers and judges, four thousand were doorkeepers, and four thousand praised Yahweh with the instruments which I made for giving praise. David divided them into divisions according to the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The Gershonites Of the Gershonites, Laden and Shimei, the sons of Laden, Jehiel, the chief, and Zetham, and Joel, three, the sons of Shimei, Shalometh, and Haziel, and Haran, three. These were the heads of the fathers' houses of Laden, the sons of Shimei, Jahath, Zina, Jeush, and Beriah. These four were the sons of Shimei. Jahath was the chief, and Ziza the second. But Jeush and Beriah didn't have many sons. Therefore they became a father's house in one reckoning. The Kohathites The sons of Kohath, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel, four. The sons of Amram, Aaron, and Moses. And Aaron was separated, that he should sanctify the most holy things, he and his sons, forever, to burn incense before Yahweh, to minister to him, and to bless in his name forever. But as for Moses, the man of God, his sons were named among the tribe of Levi, the sons of Moses, Gershom, and Eliezer, the sons of Gershom, Shebuel, the chief. The sons of Eliezer were Rehabiah, the chief, and Eliezer had no other sons, but the sons of Rehabiah were very many. The sons of Izhar, Shalometh, the chief, the sons of Hebron, Jeriah, the chief, Amariah, the second, Jehaziel, the third, and Jechameam, the fourth. The sons of Uziel, Micah, the chief, and Ishiah, the second. The Merarites, the sons of Merari, Malai, and Mushai, the sons of Malai, Eleazar, and Kish. Eleazar died and had no sons, but daughters only, and their brothers, the sons of Kish, took them to wife. The sons of Mushai, Malai, and Eder, and Jeremoth, three. Levite Duties Revised These were the sons of Levi after their father's houses, even the heads of the father's houses of those who were counted individually, in the number of names by their poles, who did the work for the service of the house of Yahweh, from twenty years old and upward. For David said, Yahweh, the God of Israel, has given rest to his people, and he dwells in Jerusalem forever. Also, the Levites will no longer need to carry the tabernacle and all its vessels for its service. For by the last words of David, the sons of Levi were numbered, from twenty years old and upward, 
for their office was to wait on the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of Yahweh, in the courts, and in the rooms, and in the purifying of all holy things, even the work of the service of the house of God, for the showbread also, and for the fine flour for a meal offering, whether of unleavened wafers, or of that which is baked in the pan, or of that which is soaked, and for all kinds of measure and size, and to stand every morning to thank and praise Yahweh, and likewise in the evening, and to offer all burnt offerings to Yahweh, on the Sabbaths, on the new moons, and on the set feasts, in number according to the ordinance concerning them, continually before Yahweh, and that they should keep the duty of the tent of meeting, and the duty of the holy place, and the duty of the sons of Aaron their brothers, for the service of the house of Yahweh. Chapter 24 Divisions of the Levites These were the divisions of the sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no children. Therefore Eleazar and Ithamar executed the priest's office. David with Zadok of the sons of Eleazar and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar divided them according to their ordering in their service. There were more chief men found of the sons of Eleazar than of the sons of Ithamar, and thus were they divided. Of the sons of Eleazar there were sixteen, heads of fathers' houses, and of the sons of Ithamar, according to their fathers' houses, eight. Thus were they divided, impartially, by drawing lots. For there were princes of the sanctuary, and princes of God, both of the sons of Eleazar and of the sons of Ithamar. Shemaiah, the son of Nethanel, the scribe, who was of the Levites, wrote them in the presence of the king and the princes and Zadok the priest and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar and the heads of the father's houses of the priests and of the Levites. One father's house being taken for Eleazar and one taken for Ithamar. Now the first lot came forth to Jehoiarib, the second to Judea, the third to Haram, the fourth to Theorim, the fifth to Malchijah, the sixth to Mejamin, the seventh to Hakos, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jacob, the thirteenth to to Huppa, the fourteenth to Jeshebib, the fifteenth to Bilga, the sixteenth to Emmer, the seventeenth to Hezer, the eighteenth to Hapazes, the nineteenth to Pethahiah, the twentieth to Jehezkel, the twenty-first to Jachin, the twenty-second to Gamal, the twenty-third to Deleah, the twenty-fourth to Meaziah. This was the ordering of them in their service, to come into the house of Yahweh, according to the ordinance given to them by Aaron their father, as Yahweh, the God of Israel, had commanded him. The Remainder of the Levites Of the rest of the sons of Levi, of the sons of Amram, Shubael, of the sons of Shubael, Jedea, of Rehabiah, of the sons of Rehabiah, Ishiah the chief, of the Isharites, Shalomoth, of the sons of Shalomoth, Jahath, the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the chief, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, Jechameam the fourth, the sons of Uziel, Micah, of the sons of Micah, Shamer, the brother of Micah, Ishiah, of the sons of Ishiah, Zechariah, the sons of Merari, 
Malai and Mushai, the sons of Jeaziah, Beno, the sons of Merari, of Jeaziah, Beno, and Shoham, and Zachar, and Ibri, of Malai, Eleazar, who had no sons, of Kish, the sons of Kish, Jeramiel, the sons of Mushai, Malai, and Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the sons of the Levites, after their fathers' houses. These likewise cast lots, even as their brothers, the sons of Aaron, in the presence of David the king, and Zadok, and Ahimelech, and the heads of the fathers' houses of the priests, and of the Levites, the fathers' houses of the chief, even as those of his younger brother. Chapter 25 24 Divisions of Musicians Moreover, David and the captains of the army set apart for the service certain of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jeduthun, who should prophesy with harps, with stringed instruments, and with cymbals. And the number of those who did the work according to their service was of the sons of Asaph, Zachar, and Joseph, and Nethaniah, and Asherila, the sons of Asaph, under the hand of Asaph, who prophesied after the order of the king, of Jeduthun, the sons of Jeduthun, Gedaliah, and Zerai, and Jeshiah, Hashabiah, and Medathiah, six, under the hands of their father Jeduthun with the harp, who prophesied in giving thanks and praising Yahweh, of Heman, the sons of Heman, Bekiah, Mataniah, Uzziel, Shebuel, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliatha, Gedaltai, and Ramamti Ezer, Joshbekesha, Malathi, Hother, Mahaziath. All these were the sons of Heman, the king's seer, in the words of God, to lift up the horn. God gave to Heman fourteen sons and three daughters. All these were under the hands of their father, for song in the house of Yahweh, with cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps, for the service of the house of God, Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman, being under the order of the king. The number of them, with their brothers, who were instructed in singing to Yahweh, even all who were skillful, was 288. They cast lots for their offices, all alike, as well the small as the great, the teacher as the scholar. Now the first lot came forth for Asaph to Joseph, the second to Gedaliah. He and his brothers and sons were twelve. The third to Zachar, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The fourth to Isri, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The fifth to Nethaniah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The sixth to Bekiah his sons and his brothers, twelve. The seventh to Jeshurela, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The eighth to Jeshiah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The ninth to Metaniah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The tenth to Shimei, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The eleventh to Azarel, his sons and his brothers, twelve. The twelfth to Hashabiah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the thirteenth, Shubael, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the fourteenth, Mattathiah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the fifteenth, to Jeremoth, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the sixteenth, to Hananiah, his sons and his brothers, twelve. 
For the seventeenth, to Joshbakasha, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the eighteenth, to Hanani, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the nineteenth, to Malathi, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the twentieth, to Eliatha, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the one and twentieth, to Hother, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the two and twentieth, to Gedaltai, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the three and twentieth, to Mahazioth, his sons and his brothers, twelve. For the four and twentieth, to Romam to Ezer, his sons and his brothers, twelve. Chapter 26 The Divisions of the Gatekeepers For the divisions of the doorkeepers, of the Korahites, Meshelamiah, the son of Kori, of the sons of Asaph, Meshelamiah had sons, Zechariah the firstborn, Jediel the second, Zebadiah the third, Jathniel, the fourth, Elam, the fifth, Jehohanan, the sixth, Eliahoenai, the seventh, Obed-Edom had sons, Shemaiah, the firstborn, Jehozabad, the second, Joah, the third, and Sachar, the fourth, and Nethanel, the fifth, Amiel, the sixth, Issachar, the seventh, Peulathai the eighth, for God blessed him. Also to Shemaiah his son were sons born, who ruled over the house of their father, for they were mighty men of valor. The sons of Shemaiah, Othni, and Raphael, and Obed, Elzabad, whose brothers were valiant men, Elihu, and Semachiah, all these were of the sons of Obed-Edom, they and their sons and their brothers, able men in strength for the service. Sixty-two of Obed-Edom. Meshelamiah had sons and brothers, valiant men, eighteen. Also Hosa of the children of Morari had sons, Shimri the chief, for though he was not the firstborn, Yet his father made him chief. Hilkiah the second, Tebaliah the third, Zechariah the fourth. All the sons and brothers of Hosa were thirteen. Of these were the divisions of the doorkeepers, even of the chief men, having offices like their brothers, to minister in the house of Yahweh. They cast lots, the small as well as the great according to their father's houses. For every gate, the lot eastward fell to Shelemiah. Then for Zechariah his son, a wise counselor, they cast lots, and his lot came out northward, to Obed-Edom, southward, and to his sons the storehouse, to Shepham and Hosa, westward, by the gate of Shalakath, at the causeway that goes up, watch against watch. Eastward were six Levites, northward for a day, southward for a day, and for the storehouse two and two. For Parbar westward, four at the causeway, and two at Parbar. These were the divisions of the doorkeepers, of the sons of the Korahites, and of the sons of Merari. The Treasurers of the Levites, Ahijah was over the treasures of the house of God, and over the treasures of the dedicated things. The sons of Laden, the sons of the Gershonites belonging to Laden, the heads of the fathers' houses belonging to Laden the Gershonite, Jehiali, the sons of Jehiali, Zetham, and Joel his brother, over the treasures of the house of Yahweh of the Amramites, of the Izharites, 
of the Hebronites, of the Uzielites, and Shebuel, the son of Gershom, the son of Moses, was ruler over the treasures. His brothers, of Eliezer, came Rehabiah, his son, and Jesheah, his son, and Joram, his son, and Zechri, his son, and Shalomoth, his son. This Shalomoth and his brothers were over all the treasures of the dedicated things, which David the king and the heads of the fathers' houses, the captains over thousands and hundreds, and the captains of the army, had dedicated. Out of the spoil won in battles did they dedicate, to repair the house of Yahweh, all that Samuel the seer, and Saul the son of Kish, and Abner the son of Ner, and Joab the son of Zeruiah, had dedicated. Whoever had dedicated anything, it was under the hand of Shalomoth and of his brothers. Officers and Judges Of the Israelites, Kenaniah and his sons were for the outward business over Israel, for officers and judges. Of the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his brothers, men of valor, 1,700, had the oversight of Israel beyond the Jordan westward, for all the business of Yahweh and for the service of the king. Of the Hebronites was Jerijah, the chief, even of the Hebronites, according to their generations by fathers' houses. In the fortieth year of the reign of David they were sought for, and there were found among them mighty men of valor at Jazer of Gilead. His brothers, men of valor, were two thousand seven hundred, heads of fathers' houses, whom King David made overseers over the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of the Manassites, for every matter pertaining to God and for the affairs of the king. Chapter 27 The Twelve Captains for Each Month Now the children of Israel, after their number, the heads of fathers' houses, and the captains of thousands, and of hundreds, and their officers who served the king. In any matter of the divisions which came in and went out, month by month, throughout all the months of the year, of every division were twenty-four thousand. Over the first division for the first month was Jashubim, the son of Zabdiel, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. He was of the children of Perez, the chief of all the captains of the army for the first month. Over the division of the second month was Dodai the Ahohite, and his division, and Mikloth the ruler, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The third captain of the army for the third month was Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, chief and in his division were twenty-four thousand. This is that Benaiah who was the mighty man of the thirty, and over the thirty, and of his division was Amizabad, his son. The fourth captain for the fourth month was Asahel, the brother of Joab, and Zebadiah his son after him, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The fifth captain for the fifth month was Shemhuth, the Israelite, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The sixth captain for the sixth month was Ira, the son of Ikish, the Tekoite, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The seventh captain for the seventh month was Helez, the Pelonite, of the children of Ephraim, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The eighth captain for the eighth month was Sibachai, the Hushathite, of the Zerahites, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The ninth captain for the ninth month was Abiezer, the Anathothite, of the Benjamites, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The tenth captain for the tenth month was Meharai, the Natophathite, 
of the Zerahites, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The eleventh captain for the eleventh month was Benaiah, the Pirithonite, of the children of Ephraim, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The twelfth captain for the twelfth month was Heldai, the Netophathite, of Othniel, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The Leaders of the Twelve Tribes Furthermore, over the tribes of Israel, of the Reubenites was Eliezer, the son of Zichri, the ruler, of the Simeonites, Shephatiah, the son of Maacah, of Levi, Hashabiah, the son of Kemuel, of Aaron, Zadok, of Judah, Elihu, one of the brothers of David, of Issachar, Omri, the son of Michael, of Zebulun, Ishmael, the son of Obadiah, of Naphtali, Jeremoth, the son of Azrael, of the children of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Azaziah, of the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joel, the son of Padeah, of the half-tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Iddo, the son of Zechariah, of Benjamin, Jeaziel, the son of Abner, of Dan, Azarel, the son of Jeroham. These were the captains of the tribes of Israel. But David didn't take the number of them from twenty years old and under because Yahweh had said he would increase Israel like the stars of the sky. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, began to number, but didn't finish, and there came wrath for this on Israel. Neither was the number put into the account in the Chronicles of King David. David's Various Officers Over the king's treasures was Asmaveth, the son of Adiel, and over the treasures in the fields, in the cities, and in the villages, and in the towers, was Jonathan, the son of Uzziah. Over those who did the work of the field for tillage of the ground was Ezri, the son of Caleb, and over the vineyards was Shimei, the Ramathite, and over the increase of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zabdi, the Shifmite, and over the olive trees and the sycamore trees that were in the lowland was Baal Hanan, the Gedarite, and over the cellars of oil was Joash, and over the herds that fed in Sharon was Shithri, the Sharonite, and over the herds that were in the valleys was Shaphat, the son of Adlai, and over the camels was Obil the Ishmaelite, and over the donkeys was Judea, the Moronothite, and over the flocks was Jazes, the Hagrite. All these were the rulers of the substance, which was King David's. The Counselors Also Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a man of understanding, and a scribe, and Jehiel, the son of Hagmoni, was with the king's sons. Ahithophel was the king's counselor, and Hushai, the archite, was the king's friend. And after Ahithophel was Jehoiada, the son of Benaiah, and Abiathar, and the captain of the king's army was Joab. Chapter 28 David's Address About the Temple David assembled all the princes of Israel, the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies who served the king by division, and the captains of thousands, and the captains of hundreds, and the rulers over all the substance and possessions of the king and of his sons, with the officers and the mighty men, even all the mighty men of valor, to Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up on his feet and said, 
Hear me, my brothers and my people. As for me, it was in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of Yahweh and for the footstool of our God. And I had prepared for the building. But God said to me, You shall not build a house for my name, because you are a man of war and have shed blood. However, Yahweh, the God of Israel, chose me out of all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen Judah to be prince, and in the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he took pleasure in me to make me king over all Israel. Of all my sons, for Yahweh has given me many sons, he has chosen Solomon, my son, to sit on the throne of Yahweh's kingdom over Israel. He said to me, Solomon, your son, shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. I will establish his kingdom forever, if he continues to do my commandments and my ordinances, as at this day. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the assembly of Yahweh, and in the audience of our God, observe and seek out all the commandments of Yahweh your God, that you may possess this good land, and leave it for an inheritance to your children after you forever. David's Charge to Solomon You, Solomon, my son, Know the God of your father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For Yahweh searches all hearts and understands all the imaginations of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Take heed now, for Yahweh has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch of the temple, and of its houses, and of its treasuries, and of the upper rooms of it, and of the inner rooms of it, and of the place of the mercy seat, and the pattern of all that he had by the Spirit, for the courts of the house of Yahweh, and for all the surrounding rooms for the treasuries of the house of God, and for the treasuries of the dedicated things, also for the divisions of the priests and the Levites, and for all the work of the service of the house of Yahweh, and for all the vessels of service in the house of Yahweh, of gold by weight for the vessels of gold, for all vessels of every kind of service, of silver for all the vessels of silver by weight, for all vessels of every kind of service, by weight also for the lampstands of gold, and for its lamps of gold, by weight for every lampstand, and for its lamps, and for the lampstands of silver, silver by weight for every lampstand, and for its lamps, according to the use of every lampstand, and the gold by weight for the tables of showbread, for every table, and silver for the tables of silver, and the forks, and the basins, and the cups of pure gold, and for the golden bowls, by weight, for every bowl, and for the silver bowls, by weight, for every bowl, and for the altar of incense, refined gold, by weight, and gold for the pattern of the chariot, even the cherubim, that spread out their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of Yahweh. All this, said David, I have been made to understand in writing from the hand of Yahweh even all the works of this pattern. David said to Solomon his son, Be strong and courageous and do it. Don't be afraid nor be dismayed. For Yahweh God, even my God is with you. 
He will not fail you, nor forsake you, until all the work for the service of the house of Yahweh is finished. Behold, there are the divisions of the priests and the Levites, for all the service of the house of God. There shall be with you in all kinds of work every willing man who has skill for any kind of service. Also, the captains and all the people will be entirely at your command. Chapter 29 Offerings for the Temple David the king said to all the assembly, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for Yahweh God. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God, the gold for the things of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and the brass for the things of brass, the iron for the things of iron, and wood for the things of wood, onyx stones, and stones to be set, stones for inlaid work, and of various colors, and all kinds of precious stones, and marble stones in abundance. In addition, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, since I have a treasure of my own, of gold and silver, I give it to the house of my God, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, even three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, with which to overlay the walls of the houses, of gold for the things of gold, and of silver for the things of silver and for all kinds of work to be made by the hands of artificers. Who then offers willingly to consecrate himself this day to Yahweh? Then the princes of the father's houses, and the princes of the tribes of Israel, and the captains of thousands and of hundreds, with the rulers over the king's work, offered willingly. And they gave for the service of the house of God of gold five thousand talents and ten thousand derricks, and of silver ten thousand talents, and of brass eighteen thousand talents, and of iron a hundred thousand talents. They with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of Yahweh under the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced, because they offered willingly, because with a perfect heart they offered willingly to Yahweh. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. David's Prayer of Praise Therefore David blessed Yahweh before all the assembly. And David said, You are blessed, Yahweh the God of Israel, our Father, for ever and ever. Yours, Yahweh, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, Yahweh, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you and you rule over all, and in your hand is power and might, and it is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. Now therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I, and what is my people, that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. For we are strangers before you, and foreigners, as all our fathers were. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is no remaining. Yahweh, our God, all this store that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name, 
comes from your hand and is all your own. I know also, my God, that you try the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. Now have I seen with joy your people that are present here offer willingly to you. Yahweh, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of your people, and prepare their heart for you, and give to Solomon, my son, a perfect heart to keep your commandments, your testimonies, and your statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for which I have made provision. David said to all the assembly, Now, bless Yahweh your God. All the assembly blessed Yahweh, the God of their fathers, and bowed down their heads, and prostrated themselves before Yahweh and the king. Solomon anointed king. They sacrificed sacrifices to Yahweh and offered burnt offerings to Yahweh. On the next day after that day, even 1,000 bulls, 1,000 rams, and 1,000 lambs with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel and ate and drank before Yahweh on that day with great gladness. They made Solomon the son of David, king the second time, and anointed him to Yahweh to be prince, and Zadok to be priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of Yahweh as king instead of David his father, and prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. All the princes, the mighty men, and also all of the sons of King David submitted themselves to Solomon, the king. Yahweh magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed on him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. David's Reign and Death Now David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. The time that he reigned over Israel was forty years. He reigned seven years in Hebron, and thirty-three years reigned he in Jerusalem. He died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon, his son, reigned in his place. Now the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the history of Samuel the seer, and in the history of Nathan the prophet, and in the history of Gad the seer, with all his reign and his might, and the times that went over him, and over Israel, and over all the kingdoms of the countries.